When I look carefully at the natural world, I found high level of coherency, high level of geometry, and as well, this interconnectivity, this interdependency of all things with other things. The whole system functions together in a balanced way. And I started to wonder, what is the source of this self-organizing system? What do you see? It depends on how you look. You could scan around an object and study it. Then you could look more closely using a microscope to isolate each part. In this instance, you would see millions of fibers and could spend a long time studying them. When you look too closely, you only see part of the picture. It is when you pull back that you see the part each fiber plays and how it is related to the others, and then the bigger pattern emerges. Imagine the new understandings we will gain if we could all learn to think differently and to look at our world through a big picture, connected perspective. Einstein believed that geometry was a key in the search to understanding the unity of the universe because it represents the relationship between things. Great thinkers came to discover the underlying geometry of nature such as the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence in many different forms of life. When Nassim Haramein analyze these geometric relationships in a changing three-dimensional space over time. He saw the 1 to 1.618 ratio appearing, known as the golden ratio, or phi ratio, as a fundamental part of the structure of space-time. Leonardo da Vinci encoded this in his famous work, The Vitruvian Man, showing that the phi ratio exists in different proportions throughout our bodies, and it's not just in humans, it is in animals, in plants, and in art. Geometric symmetry even affects our perception of beauty. Spending time in nature teaches us that everything is interconnected and everything is interdependent on each other. We have a tendency to isolate systems and then analyze them as if they were not in relationship with anything else in the universe. So that many of our laws of physics starts with the statement within an isolated system. But then if you look up, isolated system in a physics dictionary you find that no such thing has ever been found that is nothing can be isolated completely from everything else in the universe gravitational fields cannot be isolated electromagnetic fields and so on so we need to write science that takes account of the relationship of all things with each other I think if we want to find the fundamental principles of creation, we have to experience nature from an experiential base. And then the mathematics should come together simply and show beautiful results. It's too easy for scientists to get into the laboratory and just keep trying to work out the theory and lose contact with the natural world. When I'm out there surfing, I'm actually constantly being connected to these fundamental patterns of nature. The particles going up and down in the wave, the energy wave pushing me through the ocean, getting inside a barrel, the big vortex and the dynamics of the vortex. There is something very 
profound about that. Many of these things inspire me when I go back in the laboratory and start writing formulas. It's like it's in my cellular memory then. For many of us in cities, nature is but a faint memory. We are overrun by our technology. We give such importance to our digital reality that we sometimes ignore our physical reality at great peril. And it takes up so much bandwidth, affecting our performance and our well-being. We've let the noise of technology drown out our inner voice, which Nassim believes is the source of inspiration. We need to occasionally disconnect in order to reconnect. Some of the most beautiful times of my life were times where I was extremely isolated. So at that time, I was coming up to Whistler, Canada. More and more the interest I had in nature and physics and understanding the basis of reality was kind of taking over my interest. So I moved into a van to continue my research. I knew that if I could tough it out, minimize my expenses, I could get enough resources so that I could continue to work full-time doing research, trying to find some clues as to how I could unify the forces of physics. And I was in this amazing research zone where information was just flowing through and I was researching and I was finding more and more information and the pieces of the puzzles were coming together and you know moments after moments of illumination oh my god you know oh my god oh my god one after the other and it was just so beautiful it was the most transformative experiences of my life and most of the physics I wrote I rode here. Of course, it took me some 25 years to flush out the map for it, but I knew I was onto something very early on. I was learning advanced physics and I was coming to very specific conclusions, and then I was decoding ancient texts and ancient traditions that were completely confirming what I was coming up with in advanced physics and how the world comes to be and how the material structure exists. And many of these civilizations where these ancient symbols were present had numerous, thousands of different, very strange anomalies. Some of the things that are found around the world are not even reproducible with all the technology we have today. I felt that in these symbols, in the secret geometry that these pointed to very fundamental understanding of the structure of space of how matter is created and how gravitational field can be controlled it was my intent that the theoretical studies i was making would eventually lead to advanced technologies uh, that would allow us to control gravitational field and electromagnetic field in such a way that it could transform our civilization.